What's up everyone, uh, this is the uh, admin of the Chaos Burger page, uh, doing a, uh, uh, an updated deck profile in a sense. Um, I know I did this before already with my uh, previous build, but um, I kind of just felt like I needed to uh, redo um, a new one because of uh, a recent event that I partook into, uh, which was a uh, um, a shop challenge and I, I did get uh, some feedback about people wanting to hear about my deck list that I ran at the shop challenge and considering the fact that uh, with the shop challenge I I went it was five rounds I went X1 uh, for Swiss and then top eight I made it to top two and then on the final round I just decided not to um, go for uh decide not to play anymore because it was getting late when i did it and i and since i'm not really going to regionals this time around um i kind of just uh defaulted the buy card to the person to my opponent because he uh he wanted he was gonna go anyways and so yeah i just did that but um seeing as how this deck uh did pretty well um I kind of wanted to showcase it a little bit, that way, or not showcase it, but like uh, give it a run through of what it, what um, the lineup is. And so, um, so let's get to it. So what I ran was Shadow Paladins, uh, mainly specifically Luard. And so yeah, uh, let's get started. So my starter is uh, Creeping Dark Goat. Um, a lot of people are gonna disagree with me in a sense on why I'm running Dark Goat, but. I really felt like uh, Dark Goat was a, a really necessary way for me to gain my grade 3 if I never draw into him or anything. And so it essentially pushed forth what I needed and kind of get it to me. If I didn't draw a grade 3 within my first 5 or 6 um, and I haven't damaged anything, my chances of getting a grade 3 was pretty high. And so, yeah, that's kind of why I ran it. Um, I've been able to pull this off. 90% of my games getting a grade three. Uh, it didn't matter any. It didn't matter which three because I was gonna plus anyways, uh, either way. So, but yeah. Um, but I'll get th to that in a little bit on the three lineup. But he's a really good starter. Um, yeah, uh, I can't really say much about that. Uh, so for the um, the trigger lineup, I am running uh, three draw triggers. Yes, I know two of them are the how alls and one is this one um there's no reason why i ran it that this way it's just the idea that i like the foil how alls and i just wanted to incorporate one of the new draw triggers uh these are the draw triggers that go into soul plus 3000 um i'm running three because i feel like any more than that and any less is probably not that great uh if you run four i feel like you draw into it too much if i run two i feel like i don't see enough of it so three seems to be a good number and plus, it also pushes forth uh, my specific play that I do with this deck. So I run three of that. Uh, I am running three of the um, Cursed Side Ravens. Um, majority of the time, I use this card to combo for uh, my uh, Strider turn. Which is really good because um, you can make uh, your grade one that you call along with this card when you use the Luar Stride skill to probably push Luar uh, Drug Strider to about 61,000, which I've done before um, pretty easily. Uh, this thing further, this thing also gives you sack fodder in a sense uh, for cards that, you know, just deck thinning out your deck. Um, it also calls out, you know, draw triggers if you don't want to see those draw triggers in the deck or something like that. So it helps a lot. Um, it's the same idea. Two, four is too much, two is too little. Um, I do want to see it at least, and also, I run it three because in case I had to guard with one, I still have two in the deck. So, yeah. Um, I am running two of the um, Claret crits in here, um, mostly because of the fact that um, I am running one Claret Sword in here, Claret Sword Dragon Revolt, and so this does help, but the majority of the time I never ride, you're not supposed to even ride it. So this tends to be just guard fodder, and the idea is that I have six criticals in this deck, which, I mean, I'm going to get to that, because I, I do run four Belial Owls. Um, 
running four crit does the, just running the four below owls doesn't give me any not much threat but running the two extra crit actually gives me a lot more pressure when i do hit crits which for some reason i do in this in this deck um i gotten into one game where i double crit it uh where i hit double critical but my per my opponent uh, pg did and so it yeah but i mean it's still pressure because then at the very least you know they they don't expect the crit coming out of nowhere sometimes and then to finally to uh finish it off with the triggers i am running four heal triggers uh no i'm running this mostly because of the fact that it's a uh it's the foil heal trigger um besides for that mm, nothing much really i don't run the g guard that's associated with this card so it didn't matter so that's my triggers um onto my grade ones uh i am running uh two of the black wing sword breakers um i've seen a lot of people run one i'm fine with people I, i'm fine with running one it's just after testing so much i feel like two is better um because i like to draw i like to draw the whole uh not the whole deck but i like to draw into uh into uh cards that i want um also one other thing is that i i forgot to give this a shout out i shot um so shout out to uh luminite who uh is someone that i've played online uh constantly and she essentially helped me get this playstyle down of how this deck ran and it's very effective drawing cards getting your stuff going uh, maintaining hand advantage it's ridiculous um but so yeah so going for um i run two star breakers because i like to in case one gets damaged i still have one to use um, on the other fact, if, say, both of them are still in the deck and I feel like I need to draw a lot more, then I go into the Swordbreakers, uh, depending on the situation, which I see a lot, which I seem to do a lot. So running two is fine. Um, I never had much trouble with it. Uh, I am running two of this guy, uh, Gondor. Um, now, his main purpose in this deck is to power up, uh, is to help support Dragstrider. Um, when this guy... If you get five stacks of this uh, on him, he's already swinging for he's already boosting for 22 on top of the 32 that Drag Strider normally would minimally have, which is 54, uh, 22, 32, which is yeah 54. And then if you just keep going, you can get even more power onto this. So that's why he's really good in this deck. Uh, you can get up to 60 something higher. But you kind of have to keep going with the combo to make it work. Um, I run two because in case one disappears somehow or one goes in the damage zone somehow or something, I at least have one more. Um, or if I have to ride it and I can't soul blast it somehow, which I mean, it shouldn't be a problem because I soul blast so much in this deck. Um, it's just in case. Um, but having two is actually really good. Um, and I don't think I change it anytime soon. So. Uh, I am running two Brenwins, uh, just the idea that if I can't, this is more for the first stride, I'm more worried on the idea that I need to first be able to, uh, do something first stride, uh, either pitch a grade three or this guy. Um, running two is enough because majority of the time I either have an th extra three in my hand or I have this, um, after that you just ritual your way through your, um, your strides, which is a lot, which is easier. And at that point it's just a vanilla card. Um, I run four Abyssal Owls in the, uh, for one, his countercharging effect, because you need countercharging in this deck. This kind of gives you your countercharging back, uh, for Luard, for Luard, in a sense. And then also the idea that, hey, you call it onto rear from, from your hand, mandatory skill, look at the top seven for a Luard. So if you have a three in your hand that's not Luard, and you manage to hit one, you know, you can just do a swap. So... Um, and then to finish out my grade ones, I am running for Esros. Uh, yes, I finally picked them up. Um, originally I did say I didn't want to, but then after a while I noticed that, hey, I might as well finish this deck up and all I needed were the Esros, got them for a good deal. And this card was clutch a lot of my games. Uh, I'd have two in my drop zone and I always, uh, filter it out with one, uh, I'd always put one back and get one back and just stack up a lot all so I'd get one draw off of it no matter what. Um. So yeah, so that's my great ones. 
Uh, my grade twos, uh, people are going to think it's a little weird, but you'll see why. Um, I run four Leofalls. Uh, he's an 11k attacker with at Ritual, and then he has an Axe skill where you still blast one, retire a card that's, or retire a unit that's in the same column as himself, and then draw a card. Um, I only, I use that skill a fair bit for just cycling through soul and then um trying to draw into pieces key pieces that you need um i've used this card so much in the um in the shop challenge which is ridiculous um even with it being an 11k attacker it really doesn't matter it's the it's the draw and then hey you know i still swing for 11 if your vanguard if your my opponent's vanguard is still 11 so he's really good to run in this deck um just for the draw potential and everything um, I am running for the Nellies. Um, it's a really, really sweet card to have, uh, especially if you dr if you call it through Curseide, because then you get one more extra call off of it. Um, yeah, it's really good. Ritual three. When placed on rear guard, you look at the top five cards. Uh, call anything grade one. Call one grade one or less card. If it's a uh, if it has a ritual ability, gains this card gains two K. If it's a grade one. Uh, this unit gains 3k on, t uh, on top. So, this thing can be a potential 21k attacker if, for that turn, if you call, like, an Abyssal Owl or something that was Ritual Grade 1. So, that's why you'd run... That's why I run four of them. I, I want to see them, and the majority of the time, you know, who doesn't like free calls, in a sense. And then, to finish out my Grade 2s, I am running four of the Morfessas, because it's a Grade 1 in the drop zone, it's a 14k attacker, and then the added effect of being, if I hit, I can counter roll one call a grade one. That's just an added effect. Uh, majority of the time, this is used for the for the grade one being in the drop zone. Um, this fuels up uh, drag strider, or fuels up your uh, your time to get to drag strider, which is pretty fast majority of the time <laughs> because this di this thing dies a lot. So yeah, so that's my grade twos. Uh, then now to my grade threes. I am running four drag heart luards. I mean, why wouldn't you? So, I mean, grade three of the deck and get your stuff going. Um, yeah, I mean it's a really sweet card. Uh, ritual free stride, and then you know on strike skill kill one unit, call two grade ones or less. So gives you combos going. Uh, I am running two fordlas. Um, I've only used this like maybe about. 60% of the time, but it does come in handy because then you get your Belials out, your Curse Ravens out when you need them, especially if you're on a Drag Strider turn and you have all this counter boss going and you have Ravens in the deck. You can just call this, get two Ravens out, buff up Gondor, and then you just loop. You just go nuts with the looping. So, which is really ridic ridiculous, but I feel like two is enough. And then I run one of the um, Revolt because of the. If I draw into Branwen and say, like, I had Fautla in my hand, could not get myself a Luard sometimes, having him as my alternate three is a little bit better than having to ride Fautla. Um, because his stride skill is still not that bad. You, uh, on stride skill, counter boss one, um, reveal cards up till you hit two grid ones, add one to hands, pure call one. Um, there were, like, about two games where I had to ride him, which was fine, because after that, I was able to draw into my Luard and just... Uh, continue the game like normal but this was my alternate three that essentially pushed me for a better game because or pushed a uh, setup for game because uh i think with him at one point i was able to draw a P get a pg and a grit and an abyssal owl so i just called the abyssal owl and get the pg from hand or to hand so it set up a lot of stuff um so yeah um i don't run anything other grade threes just because there's no point um, also, the idea that this is also a deck thin target, so it's one less card in the deck when you call Bradley. So that's my whole deck. Um, now onto the strides. I am running one Aura Geyser Doomed and three regular Aura Geyser Dragons. Um, depending on the matchup, I, I tend to go into this guy a lot more. I notice why now, after playing. He's really good in the sense that, hey, you get the potential retire from your opponent's side, and then, you know... Sack 3 is easy with this deck, in all honesty. Um, I run 3 Aura Geyser Dragons because I don't have a second Aura Geyser Doomed. And then there's an off chance where if my opponent has no rear guards and I want to get the first stride somehow, Aura Geyser Dragon does the exact same work in a way. So it helps. So 1 and 3. Um, I'm not going to spend 50 bucks on Aura Geyser Doomed. I swear I'm not going to. Just because this current lineup is still good enough already.
Um, and then I run to uh, Drag Strider Luar because why wouldn't you run two? This thing is stupid. And two in a row really screws up your opponent hard because then what happens is if you're able to swing first time 50 some odd K, 60K to the face, uh, quad drive, no ones are greater with a crit, they have to drop a lot of hand. And if they drop a lot of hand on your first Drag Strider, you second Drag Strider and they don't have the hand to guard it majority of the time. I've noticed a lot of times where I use this first str as a, as a stride, uh, as my third stride or so, force them to waste their G guards and everything and still only make it to like a four, three to pass, four to pass. And then after that, it goes back to their turn, I survive it, and then I just proceed to drag strider them one more time and they can't, so they can't survive a double crit or a, a two crit strider again um, because they just didn't have the guard for it. So that's why I run two of them. Uh, for the guard restrict and you know pressure for the extra crit. Um, I am running two of the Phantom Blaster Diablos. More of the idea that if my opponent decides to be cocky about it and have no field, I punish them with a 36 2 crit into the face. Um, the only downside is if I say I don't have. If somehow I don't. If they have like multiple G guards, they'll guard this somehow, but. Usually, not they won't always have it, so they have to. Sometimes they take it. Um, I know I in one matchup, my one of my opponents decided to not have a field or had one card on field, and I was like, "Oh, okay, Phantom Blaster Diablo, swing for two crit into the face, hit one extra crit on top, so they had to take three damage from him, and they could not guard it no matter because uh, I did the sack three to force him to sack two, but they couldn't." So he's still good at a two of in the in the surprise timing, and it could get you uh, clutch games. That's why I run that too. Um, and then I'm gonna go into the one ofs. Uh, I run the once a breeze for the flip over for the uh, in case my opponent plays the great two game. Um, this card's not that bad because then I can set up sword breaker plays and everything, so it helps. Uh, I run one carnivore dragon for those plays where. I don't have much to work with in counter blast or something, and this tends to help a little bit more for it. Uh, I run one spectral because uh, who doesn't like double swing? Uh, I feel like more than one is not that great anymore, but I still like the one in here just for the option, which I've went into him a lot uh, for the double swing, and then after him I just go strider and usually finishes it off. Um, I do run one GB8, but I am contemplating about this card to become another Spectral again, but then some of the times he is pretty decent. Uh, he's not all that great, sadly. I, I, I just, I, I'm kind of disappointed in him too much because I got greedy one time, strode into him, and I could not finish the game fast enough, so it wasn't as great. Um, but it's just an option if I really want to go for the kill move with them. Which works. Uh, that's all the strides. Uh, I am running... So, my G-Guards, I am running three Plotmaker Dragons. Just because, oh hey, free 26, uh, 25k guard with this thing. Uh, makes a lot of things go easier to guard with. And then I run the one Dismal in case I go up against a Vanquisher matchup. Where they go VMAX and I was like, okay, Dismal. You know, if they don't kill off my rear guards somehow. All my rear guards. Um, this is so that way I can combat the the VMAX move which I didn't really use this too often but then there were times where I just used it because I didn't want to waste a plot maker and so I just used this for just a low guard that oh they're swinging for 21 okay 26 so that's why um so yeah um, that's kind of all I had for this deck profile there really wasn't much um, if you saw on my uh, on my page, you'll, you'll see uh, what my matchups were and everything. Uh, I will be linking a video to this uh, deck profile in the in the uh, in the um, description below. Um, whenever I see the video come up, uh, it is a matchup. It is a mirror match, Shadow Paladin uh, of of uh, top four, where I use this deck against uh, one of my friends who. Who played? Who was it? Also in the tournament, and yeah, you'll get a good idea of what I was doing and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, I know this deck can still be better, but 
I mean, the way I was playing it, I I didn't really lose too much. Uh, even my worst matchups, I still did pretty decent. Um, even against Gear Chronicle, I did really good with this. So, it's ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, hope you guys had a great... I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll try to upload more stuff. Um, I've been busy with, with school work and everything. So, I haven't been able to upload stuff. But, um, I think I'll try to upload a fight sooner or later this upcoming time. So look forward to it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya, man. See you guys.